something a bit different today. A transmission. I have done trannies before, and that, that might be a poor choice of words. I am familiar with the manual transmissions that Mazda used in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and this is a five-speed manual out of a 2000 Miata, an evolution orange car, one of the rarest colors, and it's only got 113,000 miles on it. Now, this transmission came out of a parts car I bought at the auction out of Mississippi. It was crashed hard in the front. We were able to get it running, sold the engine, sold a bunch of parts, but I couldn't sell the transmission because it doesn't shift. Now, I've had 150, 200 second generation Miatas in the door here, and I've had one or two bad transmissions, and I've never had one that didn't shift, but my dismantlers tell me that the fluid that came out of this is more like paste. It's not a really great sign. So even if we can figure out why it doesn't shift and get it to shift, the likelihood of me selling this transmission is, um, it ain't gonna happen. But I could keep the bell housing and the tail housing to fix something that got broken in a wreck, and that's why we're here, to salvage the good parts out of something that would otherwise be scrapped. The five-speed manual transmission that Mazda used in the first, second, and even third generation Mazda Miata dates all the way back to the late 70s in the SA and FB RX-7, like what's over my left shoulder, the old B-series trucks like the B2000, B2200, like what's over my right shoulder, the 79 to 82 626, which I don't own anymore, and the second generation RX-7 non-turbo had a transmission based on this. A lot of these have interchangeable parts, but they're not all interchangeable transmissions as whole. But I suspect that's why it's so easy to rotary swap an old B-series truck or rotary swap a Miata. And I, I guess that means you could put a Miata engine in an RX-7. No one would ever do that, would they? Now this transmission came out of a car that wasn't heavily modified. When I get these cars in, a lot of them do have aftermarket mods, intake, exhaust, they're lower, they have wheels. I've had all kinds of stuff on these cars. And typically you could judge how the car has been driven by the fact whether it's stock or whether it's been modified, how many miles are on it. This doesn't have a lot of miles on it. And the car wasn't really modified except for this, I would suspect it's a knockoff Momo shift knob. Yeah, it's a knockoff. Now this car wasn't really that modified, so I don't think it was necessarily abuse that caused this transmission's demise. I think it probably had some problems and the wreck just did it in. It probably shifted terribly before the wreck and now it just doesn't shift at all. Maybe it moves something around. We're gonna find out today. We're gonna take this thing all the way apart. The first thing I'd like to do is remove the shifter out of the shifter housing. Oh, um, whew, that was a mistake. Let me show you what this looks like. The amount of silvery, sparkly stuff is disturbing. Now, I'm not going to say that these are always perfect looking, but this looks rougher than most. I see a little bit of fluid in there. I don't really see the plastic end that I think that's supposed to sit in. I can't remember. Yeah, that, that amount of play in the shifter is because that plastic bushing is likely gone. It could be lodged somewhere and that's why it may not shift. Let's take this apart a little further. I'll remove these two covers here. There should be a ball and sp or a spring behind this. Yeah, there's the fluid. That, that doesn't look good. Let's pull the other side. I should tell you guys ahead of time, this is gonna be really messy. There's the other side. That is not what you want your gear oil to look like. No, not at all. There's a better look at the uh, hue to the fluid. Now I know this is gonna be messy, but it's okay. I got, I've got uh, plenty of pigment here. This just wipes up really easy. Not a huge deal. We'll just leave this right here so it can drip. Next, we will remove this housing. Give us a little tap. And there you can see, you should be able to pull on that and shift it. It wants to go into a fifth right there, but it doesn't want to rock. It doesn't want to rotate. These springs keep the shifter centered, the ones I just took out. 
I uh, need to soak this up somehow. It's just, uh, I guess we could just roll the transmission over. We'll try that. Just gonna let it drain for a hot minute. Make it easier to see what we're doing in here. A few here. seconds ago I mentioned a plastic bushing. It's supposed to fit in here and it is right here. So that is broken. But let's see, I still don't think, it still doesn't want to shift. I should be able to pull it. It's in neutral right now, I think. Actually, we haven't really verified that, have we? Let's get the, uh, let's get this out of the way here. Throw out bearings out. Gotta get this off the fulcrum. So normally, the failure I see with these transmissions is the input shaft bearing. And they feel super gritty when you turn them over. This feels a little gritty. It's not terrible. And the symptom that you can tell this is uh, a problem, the symptom will usually mean some static when you take your foot off the clutch in neutral. And when you hit the clutch again, you press the clutch, it disengages the transmission and you don't hear that noise anymore. That's usually an input shaft bearing. This one seems pretty tight to me. It doesn't seem out of uh, character for most transmissions with 100,000 miles on them. We're going to take this cover off next. Let's see if you can see anything wrong in here. We still can't get this into shift, can we? No? Nope. It still doesn't want to shift. I'm going to turn the input shaft over and see if I can get it to go into fifth here. Uh oh. Now that it's kind of in that gear, it feels terrible. I can barely turn the input shaft over, but now it's easier. So there's some bad stuff going on here. And from what I could see inside this housing, the problem isn't in this location, it's gonna be in the center case. The next things I'd like to remove are the neutral switch, neutral safety switch, and the reverse switch that turns on the reverse lights. This is just a 24, it's pretty easy. Usually doesn't take a ton of force. All these are is this little position switch. Press on this, complete the circuit, let go, and it doesn't. Or the opposite is true too. Sometimes they work the other way. And we'll just give it a little tap. And normally this will sit in a little shaft. There'll be a divot where this ball, or this, the end of the switch sits. And at the right position, this will pop out, I guess, which would complete the circuit. We're going to turn this thing on its side. We're going to start with the tail housing bolts that are the hardest to get out. Always want to do the hardest ones first. Now you guys are looking at how long these bolts are. It's because it sandwiches this center case, the main case here, between the tail housing and the bell housing. Now I'm gonna roll it back straight up and down. There we go. And the tail housing is off. There's your gear that runs the vehicle speed sensor. It drives your odometer. So here is the tail housing. You can see the distinct line of fluid usually sat here, which is probably a bit on the low side. And if you look at the bottom of this, there's a whole bunch of this metal paste. That's bad. You don't you don't want to see that. That You can't put all this stuff back to where it came from. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, they're usually not quite that full of metal. Uh, I have had higher mileage transmissions apart that has have some metal, but not quite like that. And if you look in here, this is your shift fork. And as you can see, this moves quite freely. So the hang up wasn't a problem with this piece. We are going to take this apart here knock a roll pin out there and there, 
which should allow us to get that shift shaft out. Now, it probably would have been easier to do this when the tail housing was still on the transmission, but we're already here. I'm gonna do it this way so it has a place to go. Okay, roll pin is, number one is out. Okay, see how that's loose. And then I should be able to slide this right out. And there's our shift shaft. So I've paused the video here to show the misalignment with these little shift forks. These are the forks that drive the forks which fit on the collar to shift between gears and they are misaligned. If it was all the way in one gear, that bottom fork would be further forward. This is kind of half into a gear and I bet that the selector rod that we pulled out would not have fit comfortably in them or it was stuck between two of them, not allowing it to come all the way out of gear or go back into the next. This is your shift gate here. This is where your shift selector rod sits. The middle two is three and four. The top one is one and two. Bottom one is fifth and reverse. So I believe if we pull it out that that will be first gear. We're gonna try that. Check first gear. Now you can see, here I'll zoom you out so you can see how that output shaft turns. And this will be a better vantage point. So that's first gear. We're going to push this in. That's second gear. See, it's turning faster. And then we're going to pop that back in. And then we're going to pull this, the middle one out. That should be third gear. And if we push it all the way in, that's fourth gear. We'll center this one and pull that one out. That's fifth gear. That doesn't really feel that great. There's a lot of load on it. And then if we go forward, that should be reverse. And look, shaft moves the opposite direction. So it seems to shift okay, and, it's, and obviously we can't tell how the synchros are by doing this, that we can't tell how the bearings are by doing this. All we can test is the shifting mechanism, which seems to be working. So I bet it was a misalignment from the accident that caused this, and I could put this back together and sell it, but the sheer volume of metal in this transmission, just I just don't want to do that. It's a $500 transmission when I know they're good, and I don't know this is good, and I'm, just, I'm not going to do that to somebody. Next, let's clean some of this junk off of it here. Boot for the clutch fork. The next thing we're going to do is remove the, this is the throwout bearing sleeve and front cover. This comes off pretty easily. And now you can see there's the input shaft bearing and the inside of that looks dirty, not totally loaded in metal. Get this gasket out of the way. Gonna get it. There we are. Well, we're almost there. Now we're off. And there's a snap ring down here, but I'm not sure if I need to take that out. We're going to take it out anyway. Let's give it some thunks. Oh, it's starting to split. Probably gonna be leaking a little bit. Maybe not. Now we are. I had to knock that input shaft back in. It's trying to pull the shaft out. It comes out a lot better now. And there's the bell housing off. Stand this up like so. And here's our 
gear set. This is the input shaft. Here's all our forks. We'll get into that in just a second. Now we'll, we will remove the detents. There's a spring and there should be a ball in there. There's the ball. Spring, ball, spring, ball. All right now, see how these move a lot easier now? Now I can't get these out because these are still roll pinned in, so I suppose we could have done that before, but I need to knock all three of these roll pins out for those shift selectors. There's one roll pin still in it. There's next one, the final one. There we are. So keep trying to get this case apart here. And there's that housing. And now we get a better look at the gear set. All right, I've got it in neutral now. So I can turn the input shaft and hold the output shaft. And now we're gonna shift it through the gears. We're gonna try to do that anyway. First thing we're gonna do is try to put it in the first, pull back on this one. There's first gear. And then we're gonna move into second. Uh, we might need a little help here with this. All right, there should be second gear. You see the output shaft is spinning faster. Now we're gonna just use this to knock this into the neutral again. Or maybe not, we'll just use this. It's very hard to get the, get neutral. All right, there's neutral. So now we need to get it in, in the third. And that's going to require this middle one to go this direction, backwards. We'll, instead of hammering on it, it's a bad idea. We'll just do this. There's third gear. That's this gear right here. And then you're gonna see this slide this way and engage fourth gear next. There's neutral, fourth. See there's more low, the output shaft is spinning one to one, virtually the same size. It may be a little off from one to one, but that's typically your one to one gear on a five speed. Now let's go back into neutral. And now we need to go into fifth gear, which is right here. That means we need to pull back on this. There's fifth. And then you get the most amount of, that's the highest ratio of course. And then we're gonna go into reverse, which when I spin this shaft, you'll see this one turn backwards. That should be reverse. There you go. So this is not all one congruent shaft. It splits right here. Now I, I suppose we could take this apart a little further and look at some things a little careful, more carefully. I'd like to do that. All right, so we're back in the neutral. We'll have to get the shift rods, the selector rods out, the shift forks off. To do that, we'll pull the detents out right here. Now some of these may come right out. So now that those are all out, I have uh, a few more roll pins to knock out. I've got one for this shift fork. Let's see if we can't get this one off. This is the, the fork that wears the most too, because people drive with their hand on the shifter as an armrest. It's not what that is. And it tries to shift it beyond fifth gear. 
and it'll wear this shift fork out. All right, that is no longer pinned to that shaft. We're just gonna knock the rest of these roll, roll pins out. Just make things a little easier to come apart. All right, there's one shift fork that we can't get out yet because it's trapped, but we will. We'll get this selector rod out. It can go out this way. There's that shift fork. We'll look at that here in a minute. It's not too badly worn. And we can manually go between fifth and reverse there. All right, should be able to slide the last rod out. There's this shift fork. That one has considerably more wear. We'll look at that in a minute. And there's the next one. Let's start with first gear. It is not really that badly worn. Usually most of the wear I see on these is on second gear which is this gear right here and i know it's hard to tell because my camera makes it that way but i would consider that a little more than average for the mile wear it's not bad and it may not have any side effects but you can definitely tell that there's been debris run through it it's been run low so then you get to Third gear, another gear I see worn often when the cars are driven hard. And I'm doing my best for you guys. Somewhere there. Fourth gear, don't mind that groove cut in it. That's pretty normal. You can see that's in third gear as well. Not awful. And then this fifth gear. Pretty good wear there. That's a good indicator because of the height of the gear when this is in the transmission. Just keep in mind that this is the top and that is the bottom. When that gear runs dry, you can see that super shiny finish on the gear. And then of course reverse. Hardly ever shows wear because most people don't do a lot of driving in reverse. And I'm not going to be pressing this all apart and specking all the synchronizer rings or any of that stuff. I mean, we know that this was full of a bunch of junk at the bottom of the transmission, and that had to come from somewhere. And typically when you pull these transmissions apart, there's always gonna be some metal in them that's just inherently how they are. But this was just a little much, and the fluid just looked really terrible. Getting into the shift forks. So this is the, I believe this is the one, two shift fork. It has some wear on the feet there. You see right there. A little bit of wear at the, at the edge. It's not bad, but it's certainly not a, a brand new nice part. They should not look like, like that. And this should be 3-4. A little bit of wear there. Not as bad as the 1-2, and it's actually a pretty good condition fork. This is fifth and reverse, and inherently, being aluminum, these are more prone to wear. In this case, um, it's really not too bad. It's definitely got somewhere. Usually what I see is I'll see a, they'll be worn all the way around for making contact with, you know, 180 degrees of that collar. And in this case, I don't think people drove with their hand on the shifter. The location where those ride, usually these are a harder metal than the forks and the forks will wear first. Now the selector paws or whatever you want to call these, these are forks. And they don't look too bad, but you can see there's a hair of wear. That one looks pretty good, but you can definitely see where that was sitting most of the time. Some more wear right there. And this one's the worst one. This isn't as bad as I've seen. A lot of the front wheel drive Mazda transmissions, the H series boxes, this is a really common problem and ends up in a really sloppy shifter. Sometimes you gotta weld them up and grind them and even then you get mixed results, but these aren't really that bad. This is the piece that fits in that. 
And this isn't really terribly worn either. Looks pretty decent. This is the culprit or part of the culprit. You can definitely tell there was some wear where it was sitting in the detents. That's really not the end of the world there. It's really not going to make a huge difference. But the fact that that plastic bushing was missing and in the shifter box is part of the problem. Uh, when that's gone, you can't go all the way into a gear. Or you have to use so much force to get it there that it really puts a strain on the rest of it. And I bet between that and the fact that this car met an abrupt stop is why it was stuck in some sort of neutral. It was stuck in one gear. I just couldn't determine what gear that was. That really doesn't have too much wear, but you can see the amount of gunk on this. I don't necessarily think this transmission was bad. Now, let's use the term bad extremely loosely here because when that car came in and we pulled it into the shop, we could not get it to shift. It would not shift. It didn't matter if the engine was running or the engine was off, you were on the clutch, off the clutch, or the amount of force you put on the transmission shifter in any direction, we couldn't get it to shift. So on that account alone, we condemned the transmission. Why would I try anything else? Then when we dismantled that Miata, the fluid looked terrible. So we threw it on a pallet, threw it on the shelf for a rainy day. And I have another transmission here that needs a bell housing that has low mileage and it looks good on the inside. It just has a cracked ear on the bell housing. So it makes sense for me to tear this transmission down to save another. In the case of fixing this transmission, yes, I suppose it would be a maybe. I could clean everything out of the transmission, reseal it, realign all the shift selector rods, and put a new bushing at the end of the shifter, and this transmission might be just fine. But that metal in the bottom of the housing came from somewhere, and that's a giant red flag for me. It's a big risky question mark, and I don't sell that stuff here. This is a $500 transmission when everything works perfectly and I can stand behind it. I don't want to stand next to this transmission. It's not something I would even consider selling here. I'll just use it for parts to save something I feel good about. And if you could rebuild it, I suppose it would be worth it there. You could put new synchronizer rings in, new bearings, check all the other parts, maybe some other parts, hard parts are worn in it. But that is also very cost prohibitive because the lowest mileage transmissions I ever get in here, 40, 50,000 mile transmissions, I sell those for six or $700 and you could easily surpass that with some new parts. So at the end of the day, this was a business decision. This transmission came apart. I hope you enjoyed this oddball teardown. I know it's way out of the norm, but if you'd like to buy any parts out of this transmission or you need a Miata transmission, I have every single variant available, every single one. I'm gonna leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars every single week more Miatas as always. I really hope you enjoyed this video as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, even the criticism. I love it all and I'll catch you on the next one.